Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's virtual bridge session. Um, I'm pleased to uh, introduce uh, Bill Crawford from Fourth Valley College who's going to be talking about developing digital skills um, with Microsoft Education. The presentation will be for half an hour in total. That includes Q&A. Uh, please add any questions into the, the chat box and we'll answer those. Uh, we'll, we'll give plenty of time to answer those at the end. After the half hour, um, please do stay on um, and we'll have a more informal chat. Um, we are recording now and we will be recording right up to the talk. Um, but anyway, over to you, Bill. Well, thank you, Andrew, and thank you, everyone, for coming along today. Um, I uh, am also an MIEE, that's a mouthful, Microsoft Innovative Expert Fellow um, since October this year. Um, and I wanted to just basically go through some of the opportunities that are available through Microsoft Education, uh, Microsoft Education programmes. Um, I thought it would be interesting to start with... Uh, the CDN Digital Capability um, Review and the recommendations that come from that um, with the commitment of colleges to adopt our digital approaches, um, digital ambitions, digital strategies, um, and interestingly to support effective blended learning um, with a focus on digital pedagogy, um, but also the, uh, the need then for consistent um, digital competencies uh, for lecturers and indeed all staff. Um, so um, I've looked at the, the baseline support staff capabilities um, and the main kind of points that I can see coming out of there is, um, you know, creating accessible documents and creating accessible uh, content, educational content, finding and organising files and information, sharing that information um, and managing files. Uh, and also uh, a big part of communicating and collaborating. Um, and of course, there's also the um, lecture professional standards. Uh, I have put a tick there beside these three elements of professional values and professional knowledge and understanding, because I think what you will see today is that the Microsoft education programs and uh, indeed the um, educational courses and resources that are available tick all of these boxes. So this morning, I wanted to discuss uh, about uh, digital transformation, the professional learning community, how to build a professional learning community, and indeed extending to a wider professional network. Um, and we then will have a look at some of the um, resources that are available for CPD. So wearing my Force Valley College hat for a moment, moment, uh, Fourth Valley College became a Microsoft Showcase College in, uh, this year, in September, and there are a number of Showcase Colleges throughout the UK, there are 46, um, five of them are in Scotland, and three of those are colleges, um, Fourth Valley College, Haskell Kelvin, and West College Scotland. So what is Showcase Colleges all about? Well, it's a programme that um, Microsoft run um, and, and support along the lines of uh, showing that uh, as a showcase college that you're student-centered, that you provide immersive, inclusive learning experiences, that you stimulate the development of essential future ready skills. Um, and uh, one of the benefits of being a showcase school is that we, we engage with Microsoft. Um, we have a Microsoft team, for example, where all the showcase schools around the world are in that team. Um, and that means that we can engage with like-minded schools and colleges throughout the world. Um, and we can deepen and expand educational transformation using Microsoft's education transformation framework. So the education framework, there's actually two. There's a higher education framework and a, um, it's American, they call it K-12 ETF, so schools. Um, and I think FE bridges and sits in between those two, really. Um, and, but it's, it's very useful, I think, then to look at both of those in terms of leadership and policy, um, change management, the culture of the organisation, um, into teaching and learning um, and management of teaching and learning, student-centred focus. Um, um, and uh, then the, the third element there is 
secure connected campus, intelligent environment. So um, on the IT infrastructure side, what, uh, what kind of secure features are we, we, we using in IT? What kind of facilities do we have? And indeed, data and analytics and AI. Um, and the, the perhaps most important one of all is our student, student and school and college success. So looking at uh, inclusion, accessibility, student retention, student completion of courses, um, alumni engagement, how do we uh, engage with that? Um, perhaps the one that sits kind of outside FE uh, is academic research in terms of that's really university research programs. But um, I think there's a, an element there that we can look at certainly with CDN research and looking at how can we as a sector collaborate and do that collaborative research um, in our education transformation. Um, and a big part of that then is, is showcase schools um, working together uh, within that kind of framework. So uh, a huge part of that obviously is then how do we um, develop our staff to be able to do all this? Um, and uh, the Microsoft Innovative Education Program is really all about mentoring and coaching and training. There is um, a training path for um, becoming a trainer. It's called the MIE Trainer Academy. Um, and the purpose of MIE trainers within colleges is to effectively train their colleagues on the use of digital technologies. Um, both in the educational context, but perhaps even for support staff as well. Uh, within the showcase uh, colleges um, nomination process, they look for um, all staff, including leaders and managers, to be engaged in that process. So they look for at least 60% of the staff to be certified Microsoft Innovative Educators, 3% to be experts, um, and the target um, certainly for us at Force Valley College is to have 25% of academic staff gaining Microsoft certified educators. So that's a, that's a goal um, that we work towards. Um, so just in summary, the showcase benefits is that um, we have the ability to share insights and best practices globally. Um, we can enjoy partner products and um, um, information we get, quite a lot of information from Microsoft. We tend to get kind of um, uh, Microsoft giving us a kind of heads up on the roadmap of what's happening with the various different technologies and applications. Um, it helps us to um, guide our digital transformation. So the educational framework, um, certainly when, when we applied for it, um, I worked with, with our senior management team, um, and it was a really useful framework to basically look at where are we at this present moment in time on our journey and be able to identify that um, and, and, and look at, well, uh, where are the gaps and how can we then plan for the future to, to fill in those gaps. Um, helps to um, shape the future of education programmes. Microsoft are always looking for educators to provide feedback um, on their uh, platforms and also to uh, contribute to the vision of schools and colleges around the world. Um, and I, I guess one good, one, one real good benefit of showcase school is it's um, elevating the college, um, uh, its visibility and role as a, a, an educational leader. So the Microsoft Innovative Educator Program consists of kind of three threads. There's the MIE, as we call it, Microsoft Innovative Educator, MIE Trainer, and uh, MIE expert. Um, to give a bit of an example, my journey, um, I joined the Microsoft Education Center, and I'm going to shorten that now and just call it MEC. Uh, I joined the MEC in um, November 2018. Um, I must admit, I looked in there, was bewildered by the amount of courses, like, where do you start? Um, uh, however, I did get started. I became certified MIE in 2019. Um, I heard uh, out there on the Twitter sphere that uh, there was MIE expert um, and went along to an event in Edinburgh just before lockdown. It was in the January, I think. Um, 
met with uh, um, school teachers there, um, and um, sorry, there, uh, went to that event, and from leading on from that, I basically took the plunge. Self-nominated um, uh, application for MIE expert and was accepted in February 2020. Um, became an MIE trainer in March. Um, you can guess that that was because of lockdown. Um, we, uh, we we suddenly locked down and I found myself in that position of um, knowing a fair bit about Teams and Office 365. And so I basically um, put myself forward there to train other staff um, in, the, in the lockdown process. Um, and as I said at the start, um, I've just recently become an MIE fellow. So what do I get involved in? I get involved in loads of training sessions um, uh, as my, in my role as a learning and digital skills mentor. I mentor staff. Um, I take part in tweet meets that uh, go on. I've taken part in Microsoft events. Um, I think fortunately, to an extent, sounds a bit weird, but fortunately, a lot of the events were um, virtual last year, um, particularly the global ones that you would maybe never um, get to go to or, or maybe once in a lifetime type events that we've managed to, to get along to. My experience is it's absolutely the best professional learning network, one of the best anyway that I have ever come across. Um, uh, purely because of things that I'll talk about in MIE Expert shortly. So to become an MIE, a certified MIE, um, you join the education centre, complete two hours of training. Um, I'll just quickly go through the MIE trainer one. Uh, to be an MIE trainer, you need to do the training learning path on the Microsoft Education Centre or do instructor-led training. So another trainer can do that. Um, and you commit to reporting training for 100 educators um, between uh, across the academic year. Um, that actually means that you have 100 participants in your training courses. Um, an MIE expert simply is someone who's a certified MIE, wants to uh, self-nominate, fill in a sort of self-nomination form. Uh, it's normally between May and July uh, and the second window. Uh, is on November the 15th. So if there's anybody out there that is a certified MIE and um, is thinking about being an MIE expert, the nominations open up again in three days' time. So an MIE expert is someone who's certified the passionate, innovative educators, passionate about the effective use of technology um, and want to connect with their uh, local, uh, national and global community of educators. The benefits of that um, is that you're effectively joining a global network of like-minded educators. Um, you can share ideas, share practice, develop your skills through that, that programme, your impact in the learning and teaching of your students. Uh, you can be invited to various events, that happen locally, nationally as well. And when you become an MIE expert, you are added into a UK team. There is also a Scottish team as well. Um, and we have monthly connection calls where we share practice um, and we get Microsoft updates as well throughout that. Um, an example of a couple of events is BET in London. It happens annually. Um, and there's the education exchange that Microsoft run. Um, the, the normal pattern pre-COVID was that education exchange happens in um, a host country um, and educators, uh, MIE experts are invited to go to that, uh, a select few um, to that education exchange. Last year they ran it virtually, um, so I was able to go to that and it was a fantastic event. Um, give a bit of background, there are 1,020 MIE experts in the UK. Um, right across the board from primary school right to AHG University. 220 of them are in UK colleges. Um, and for the kind of Scottish perspective, so 207 FE colleagues in the rest of the UK. And there are 13 of us in Scotland at present. 
Um, just quickly put that um, MIE application up. Um, there will be links for this, so you don't need to worry about it too much. Um, but you can go and have a look at all the information. And I am quite happy if anybody wants to get in contact with me to um, support anyone who wants to go through that process. Uh, there's a document that provides the questions that um, are asked in the, the, the nomination form. Um, and yes, as I say, ask. We're a really, really supportive bunch, so you can come and ask us um, on Twitter, hashtag Team MIEE Scotland, or indeed reach out to um, uh, myself uh, or anyone in the MIE community that you know of. So getting started, um, what I wanted to do was show you the Microsoft Educator Center um, and how we can get started. Um, there is a sign in, you'll see in the top right hand corner. Um, so the web link for that, I think will go into the chat, hopefully it's um, education.microsoft.com. You sign in, you need a Microsoft account. Um, if your organization or your college um, have a Microsoft uh, tenancy, you can sign in with your organizational account, that's what I do, um, uh, or you can sign in with your own personal Microsoft account and you can, you can get one of those just like signing up for a Gmail, same idea. Um, so what I want to do now is just quickly find it. There we go. Let's hop over to the Microsoft Education Center. Hopefully I'm sharing that. Looks like it. Yeah. Um, so in the Microsoft uh, Education Center, I am signed in at the moment, just to show you that um, when you uh, go in there and signed in, you have a profile. Um, if I click my profile there, there, you get badges for all the courses that you've done. I have done tons. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you also have this uh, redeem achievement code, which your trainers, uh, MIE trainers, um, can generate these codes and give you training codes that go in for um, your CPD. I'll show you how that works just in a moment. Um, and I think um, I have put out a training code for today. So you can go and have a go at that, redeem the achievement code, and you'll get um, CPD credit for uh, today's session. If I quickly go back into my profile, um, and I need to move things, uh, in your profile you have um, the ability to view transcripts. And when you do that, you get a PDF, which has all of your training in there. And and the custom training instructor led training. So, so that shows up as um, and shows exactly what kind of training would be useful, I think, for like your PRD, your um, um, what you've done on the education centre. Um, um, oh. Ah. How do I get rid of the bar at the top for Zoom? Hmm. Two seconds. So what I have done, because there's nothing worse than going into the mech and thinking, wow, where do I start? As I've created um, a wake clip, I'll share out. Uh, I've put in a, a session feedback. I would really appreciate any feedback from today's event. Um, and it has a number of links. And what I've done is set up kind of mini wake clips. So, for example, college leadership. If we go to that, um, there are a number of resources about transforming education with strategic leadership. It gives, there's a, there's a course on the uh, education transformation framework. Um, 
Uh, also for lecturers, I've done a collection there. So there is um, courses that I've put in there that I think some people might like. A um, couple of seconds. Um, so I've included digital baseline capabilities, how to deliver online learning. So there's a course on hybrid learning on transforming learning with Microsoft Teams, accessibility and differentiation in the classroom, using assess, uh, immersive reader, um, a whole course, there's a whole course on, uh, on dyslexia awareness that is done um, uh, in partnership. Um, and yeah, loads and loads of courses that I've put in there that I think would benefit lecturers. And I've also done one, um, for support staff. So if you're support staff, um, a lot of the courses do talk about because they're geared towards educators, but just to give examples, something like an introduction to OneDrive, there's resources there. Um, and further down, I've put in some courses like enriching the learning experience using Edge Browser um, and collaborating with colleagues through staff teams uh, and team meetings, etc. So, I think at that I will stop uh, for any questions. That's great. Thanks, Bill. I uh, re really appreciate that. Um, I'm just going to put your contact details in the chat as well, in case anyone has uh, Absolutely. any questions. Um, when it finally comes up, there we go. Um, yeah. Anyone have any questions, please either put it in the chat well, do, do, do. if you just want to jump in like Walter. <laughs> just a, I, thanks, Andrew. Uh, just a comment, Bill. Um, you know, one of the questions always about how does this feed into PRD, and I think what you showed in the transcript there is absolutely brilliant. You know, yeah. that's just ready-made. Just take it out and plug it in. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I, I, I've also noticed that on the Mac, it's kind of hidden away. It's way down the bottom corner, but you can actually download that data as well. And All right. If you were looking i haven't done it yet but um I, I suppose you can kind of download it as a zip file as uh, essentially um and it, it comes in effectively as an excel spreadsheet so you could use that i suppose to um to feed that into prd systems anyone that's clever enough for power automate <laughs> um, any other questions oh joy would you like to come on Hi, hi. Sorry, I've not got a camera today, so <laughs> I'll just be a disembodied voice. Um, no, it was more um, a comment, actually, just to say thanks. That's been really interesting. Um, and from a like a librarian's point of view, I could see for our library staff how that could be really um, useful um, for helping us obviously support students, because that's a lot of um, what we do. Um, and I have to say, it's something I've been I've been thinking of doing, but it is the it is the time factor. Um, I guess I could ask how how could you see that maybe being built into the working day? Um, if people are doing that, do they get time, or is it really on your own time that you have to do it? It's it's one of those difficult things at, at the moment. I mean, I will admit that a lot of uh, what I've done, I've, I've kind of done in my own time um, um, but um, I mean for an example that we're doing at the moment with Fourth Valley College is that as part of the Digital Skills Academy we felt really important to get these meta skills um, and start embedding these in and it's like how are we going to do that and um, so there is a course there it's called 21st Century Learning Design um, and, and we looked at that and it's covering collaboration and constructing knowledge and self-regulation or self-management and um, real world problem solving. And it's, it gives a framework for how you can evaluate lessons to improve uh, the opportunities for students to do all these things. So I think that readily maps over to the SDS meta, meta skills as well. Um, so we are actually using that in the college um, we're, we're basically running a 10-week course um, and um, each week um, we, we ask the participants to go and spend an hour or so looking at the, the MEC course. Uh, so, mm. for example, it might be collaboration. And then on the Tuesday, we have a one-hour session uh, during the day. Um, it's not always ideal for everyone, 
Uh, so we also live in a, a, an asynchronous mode. But in that live synchronous session, what we then do is say, bring along your learning plans and your learning activities. And we'll, as a peer group, evaluate it against the rubrics and put this into practice. So it's embedding that practice into our, our everyday operation, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, that's really interesting. That's great. Thank you. Any other comments or questions for Bill before we, we wrap up? Walter? Yeah, I, I noticed Bill dropped in Power Automate into his re reply to me. <laughs> uh, is that another uh, virtual bridge session coming up, Bill? <laughs> oh, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll need to think about how we do it, um, but um, yes, uh, uh, yeah, Power Automate is really, really useful. Um, I, I've, I've got an example, a couple of examples. I've got one um, that I, I set up with our maths department. So we have a form that is um, on our Moodle platform, um, and uh, I think the maths also post it into their teams, engineering, I certainly post that into our teams as well. And when a student fills in that, that, that forum um, and they can uh, upload like a picture of what the problem is and what they're needing help with. Um, and as soon as they submit that form, I've got an automate that picks that form up, gets the details and sends it to the maths team. And um, so they get an instant notification to say this person needs help. Um, yeah. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Um, we're just coming up to the end of the, the half hour, so um, I'd like to take this opportunity to say thanks very much, Bill. I uh, really appreciate your, your time. And uh, for, for all those links, um, it's really useful having those in advance and being able to add as the, the, the presentation went on. Um, for everyone else, uh, please do stay behind for, for, for a bit more time, a bit more of an informal chat if you, if, if you so wish. Um, but thanks again. My pleasure. And please reach out to me, anyone. <laughs>